don't buy a black desk, you know, full of fingerprints, marks, nightmare. Anyway, today, let's discuss 10 of the most common drone mistakes that people make when they're a beginner or a noob. Let's get into that video. So these tips are gonna work with whatever drone you've got. Today, I'm just gonna showcase the DJI Mini 2. Because the DJI Air 2S has gone, you know, them shelves are looking pretty bare. So if you wanna advertise on these shelves, let me know because I've had some weird propositions already about people wanting to, you know, advertise stuff on these shelves. So they're going down really well. But jokes aside, because that DJI Air 2S has been sold, the Mini 2 is just going to be what I'm going to be focusing on today, but you could use this on any drone, so any decent drone, and that's going to have to be one of the points. So you get the drone, you unbox it, we go through all that, and then the first mistake that most people make is this one. So flying in your garden is the biggest mistake that people make as a new pilot. It's the easiest way of just going out and flying and testing that drone. The garden is used because it's the most easiest and people just can go there in the privacy of their own garden and fly that drone without people watching them. And that's why most people actually do this. But don't forget, you're a beginner, so you have no clue or experience of flying this drone yet. And that garden is full of obstacles. You've got furniture, you've got the cat, you've got kids, trees, you've got the next door neighbor's building, you've got your building, so many obstacles, so many actual reasons why you're gonna crash that drone. So unless you live in some massive house with a huge back garden or open land behind you, the garden should be avoided. So you wanna go out and find some open stretches of land, go to the countryside, find a big field, the beach when the tide's out, those are the areas you want to be flying, practicing, avoid that garden. The garden is just gonna be a recipe for disaster, point two. Now you need to get into the habit of checking your equipment before you go out flying. Now I'm not saying you need to go out and buy the finest microfiber cloth out there or checking all the screws and going through everything meticulously in fine detail. I'm not saying that, but you need to get into a basic kind of checklist of what you want to be doing before you go out even flying. So the crucial ones are you need to be checking the propellers, making sure that they swivel around properly, making sure that there is no actual cuts on them and everything is working fine. If you fly at a beach and any sand gets into these arms here and this doesn't rotate 360 smoothly and there's any grit inside here, when that drone is in the air, any slight grit can stop these propellers going round and that's just game over, your drone is gone. So make sure you are checking your propellers. Not only are they secure, but check the motion as well. I've been talking to someone in America and she had a DJI Air 2S. The propellers had an issue with them, it's flying absolutely normally and then all of a sudden the propeller stopped and it crashed out of the sky and that was game over for that drone. The batteries on the drone, make sure that you're storing these correctly, make sure there's no swelling on them. They're stored in a proper, decent, temperatured room. Don't have them on the windowsill, don't have uh, sunlight at them all the time. If it's really hot and these are really warm, don't be flying them. It's a good idea to have a few sets of these. If you get the fly more combo, you're fine. If you're not, you just got the basic one, just grab another battery as well. But make sure you're checking these and checking your propellers. Just check as well the gimbal, make sure it's actually looking fine. There's no cracks on it. You know, little things, little nicks can happen on here. And one slight crack on the front of that gimbal cover, and then you, you know, your footage is gonna be terrible. If you use ND filters like I do, what I do before I go out and fly, I'll, I'll sort of put one of the filters on and keep it on all the time so then I don't have to mess about with it. When I get there, it's just ready to fly straight away. That can change independent on the lighting conditions, but I always normally have an ND filter on there before I go out and fly. So once you get to that area, have a bit of a plan about where you want to take off and land and what you actually want to film when you're there. So what I will do is I will pick certain subjects in that area. So there might be a really cool building, might be a tower or a reservoir or a dam or something. And that, that those, right, I need to get all four of those areas. So I want to take off in this area here. I don't want to be around loads of crowds when I'm taking off. So have a bit of a plan and then you will not just then gung-ho taking off and then just flying around and just wasting your battery. So have a plan and that leads on to more advanced flying, but for a beginner point of view, don't just rock up to that location and just take off and then just wing it. Have a bit of an idea and look at the area, look for any hazards or problems. Is there any power lines? Is there any cables or, you know, what's the situation in that area like? Because everyone's different, but have a bit of a plan. I'm not saying turn up with a checklist and going off, all oh, right, we need to know. No, just, just have a look at the area, assess it, take off, but have a plan. Now, another beginner mistake is being a bit of a maverick flyer. Now, I certainly don't live by this rules and guidance, but I've been flying a number of years and I weigh up the risks, weigh up the 
risk of flying in certain locations, certain moves that I'll do, and I'll assess it beforehand. And most of the time, before I do a shot, say I'm flying under a bridge, I might fly really close to it, I might fly backwards, I might fly and just do a few takes. And then the actual final shot you'll see is maybe the third or fourth attempt. As a beginner, what you don't want to be doing is flying with a group of friends, loads of distractions, loads of people saying, oh, can I have a go, can I have a go? You know, flying recklessly in sports mode, flying all over the place. Those are number one reasons why you're going to crash your drone. So often the best footage I'll get, I'll be somewhere in the corner at a beach or, a, or like a landscaped area away from everybody. I can then concentrate on that flying and get the shots. If I've got loads of people coming over to me saying, oh, hi, you're right, or what's your drone, or asking you questions, that's all well and good, but it's all distractions and I can't concentrate then getting the best shots. And that's me flying for a number of years. If you're a complete beginner, you don't 100% know the actual app, you don't know the flying performance, you don't know everything about this drone, and then you've got loads of people next to you, that is just a number one way of how to crash that drone. I had to put this in, I kind of set myself up with this. But if you've not followed the channel, we focus on loads of different filmmaking techniques. We do videography, photography, editing on different editing apps, and also flying the drone from beginner all the way up to advanced flying. So if you're new around here, subscribing would be a good choice, I think. And I hope you get some value out of this in the future. Anyway, let's move on to the next point. So there's nothing worse than getting to that location, setting the drone up, and then you've seen that new updates required, new firmware update or downloads required. Some you can skip, yes, but I like fine with the latest firmware updates. This normally gives new features or better performance, but some of them you just can't skip. Get into that habit of checking it before you actually get to that location, and then once you're there, the chances of actually then getting a new update is really slim. It just prevents actually wastage of the battery. So wind and drones don't always go well, especially on smaller drones like the DJI Mini 2. So it's better than the Mavic Mini 1 for sure. The Mini 2 can handle 28 to 38 kilometers an hour wind. So it's not bad. And I've done loads of wind tests on here. So go and check them out if you've not seen them already. The bigger drones are obviously gonna be better in higher wind. The Air 2S, it says on the spec sheet, 38 kilometers per hour wind. I've had it in much higher than that and it's been like a tank. Same with the uh, 2 Pro. The bigger the drone, they're gonna be better in that wind and that's one of the good selling features. And what I always recommend to people, yes, a Mini 2 drone is fantastic, but if you're gonna be flying in areas where it is windy, skip this drone and go for the Air 2S because then you're gonna have the best, obviously, features and then flying performance and wind is one of them. But check the wind in your location. That's another part of what you're, you need to be doing and I do all the time. So UAV forecast, not sponsored by them in any way, but it's one a good app that I use and this will show you your current location wind data. Now I fly in a lot of mountainous areas over cliffs, over sea, and sudden changes of winds happen all the time. So be prepared for it. If you experience any issues with the wind and your drone is starting to fly away, you need to lower that altitude rapid. So put it into sports mode and lower the altitude. The higher you are, the stronger they're gonna be the wind. So the lower the altitude in sports mode, you should be able to get it back to you. If it's all going wrong and you just see your drone flying away, even once you've lowered that altitude, try and find a safe place. So if, if you're over land, for instance, and there's nobody about, just keep decreasing that altitude and land it. There is nothing worse than just seeing your drone flying away into the distance. When if it's safe and you can land that drone, you're going to see it on the app. It's going to have going to find my drone and you'll have an idea of where it is and then you can go and retrieve it. Yes, it might be destroyed. It might be in water, but the chances then of actually retrieving it and having the drone yourself, you can then send it off to get repaired or it might work. Don't just let it fly away. I've seen videos where these drones have flown away and go, oh no, the winds took it. They don't even try to lower it. If the drone is low enough and you put it into sports mode, you will get it back. You know, lower that drone and keep lowering it until you can get it back or land it. If it's like a hurricane or a tornado when you're flying your drone, then what do you expect? You deserve it. Now, one of the best features on these drones, for the DJI drones, is the return to home feature. It is fantastic and it's really accurate but don't push it too much and don't rely on it all the time. Now practice it, be aware of how to use this and how it works. So get into that open area field, 
send it out a little bit, press return to home, and then you'll have confidence in just how good it is. Now I've showcased on this video, if you ignore the automatic return to home function, it might not get back to you. So once that low battery is really low, it will then come on and go, right, it needs to come back. That auto return to home comes on. Just let it, don't cancel it. I've shown what happens if you do cancel it. A couple of times it's come back to me, a couple it hasn't, I've had to then go and retrieve it. If the wind is strong, it doesn't assess that when that comes on. So that battery will come down rapid. So as soon as that return to home battery message comes on, just accept it. Now, I'm not going to go deep into this. I'm certainly not the drone police, but just know the drone laws for your country. So don't get caught out as a new flyer. So don't be picking your drone up and then going and flying it recklessly because the chances of then either crashing it or getting fined is quite high. So just be sensible and follow those rules. I was recently in Cornwall at a beach and there was some idiot flying his drone over people, over big, big groups, about five meters, five, 10 meters above them, just circling around, you know, perving on women. Don't be doing that, don't be an idiot. So just fly where you are in your country for them set rules. I'm not asking you to get the textbooks out and go and research and everything, but you need to be aware of those rules, stick to them, and you won't have any problems then. I see this one a lot, okay? So all the gear, no idea. So when you get into that new sport or hobby, you kind of want to get that bug, don't you? And you buy everything for it. Same with drones. There is so many drone manufacturers out there that kind of just sell the drone as it is. And that's how they want you to fly it with just the controller. But you go onto Amazon and eBay and you see these hundreds of different accessories out there. And then your drone goes from this really cool slim-lined drone to this monstrosity in the air with everything hanging off it. GoPros, landing legs, flotation devices, everything I've seen on these. And you can buy and look and they all work in their own way. But sometimes I would just suggest avoid them because one, the battery percentage, if you're putting heavy items on here is gonna come right down. Two, it makes it unstable. It might be over that maximum takeoff weight. So, and then three, it kind of like makes you feel like your drone is more invincible than it is. Flotation devices, an example, people will be landing those in the bloody Pacific Ocean thinking that, oh, my drone's safe. But once you actually use those flotation devices, you'll see just how unstable your drone actually is. Now, talking of gear, it's holiday season coming up. People buy these drones either for themselves or for a gift. So which drone should you actually buy? So my recommendation to you is to avoid the cheaper drones, which you'll see on Amazon and eBay, or the drones you might see in some shops in malls. I'm not saying they're bad, but I get probably sent emails 20 or 30 a day of companies asking me to review their drones for free and one that drones don't pay the bills and two it's they're using me as free advertising because most of the time i would say 70 percent of the time the drones are terrible so you know they're, they're not worth it so if you're going to buy a drone and you see a drone for about 200 dollars 200 pounds Personally, I would spend more, get the DJI Mavic Mini 1, the Mini SE, the Mini 2, or save up more. You're gonna get a better performing drone by spending more and avoid the cheaper ones, which you'll see on Amazon and eBay, for example. They're all right, yes, but the flying performance isn't very good. The battery level's not very good. The whole app experience is usually useless. So I would avoid them. Autel, DJI, Hubson, at push. But those are the three manufacturers I would recommend. Once you get them, you know, you can be able to, you could literally buy this Mini 2 and never buy another drone if you don't want to for another five, 10 years. And this will be awesome. So 10 tips there, guys, for you beginners out there or for anyone who's not beginner and you might have a bit of a refresh from this. But if you are enjoying this, a like and subscribe would be excellent. If you want to check out some more, I'll link here of how to make some money with your drones. If you just bought one of these drones or you want to save for one and you already have one of the smaller drones, then make some money. I'll pop this up here with your drone. And then also, if you are a beginner and you want to actually go from your beginner flying all the way to moderate and advanced flying techniques, I'll put this video up here. But I'm Darren. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great day and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.